Welcome to Light Over Heat with Professor David Imani. This week, I want to encourage everybody to drop the language of shoot first and ask questions later. A recent string of shootings happening in very short succession has reignited people's concerns about stand your ground laws, which they oftentimes equate with an idea that people can shoot first and ask questions later. And the cases in question here are of a 16 year old boy on a porch in Kansas City, Missouri, a couple of cars full of young people pulling into the wrong driveway in upstate New York, a cheerleader who got into the wrong car in a grocery store parking lot in Austin, Texas, and a child and her father whose ball rolled into the wrong neighbor's yard in Charlotte, North Carolina, as well as a case, I don't know where it actually happened, but uh, apparently someone shot at a car uh, that was making, uh, trying to make a, either a grocery store or a restaurant delivery, it doesn't really matter, uh, and pulled into the wrong driveway. So understandably, people who uh, are observing this and who are hearing about this incessantly on their uh, cell phones and the push notifications that they get you know, are thinking that people are going crazy just shooting at people in the name of self-defense for no good reason. Now, the facts of these cases are yet to be brought to light fully, but on the surface, they look bad, shooting at someone who has pulled into your driveway erroneously, for example. But some of these other cases don't even appear to be acts of lawful self-defense. So, you know, the the person who shot the kid and her father whose ball rolled into his yard is just a criminal bad actor. He was on, uh, out on bail from attacking uh, his girlfriend with a mini sledgehammer. The person who shot the cheerleader who got in his car and then got out of his car appears also to be simply a criminal bad actor engaging in an unlawful act of criminal assault. So we need to have some nuance in understanding the differences between these cases, you know, but we also have to understand that just claiming self-defense and actually acting lawfully in self-defense are two different things. Now the law of self-defense is very complex. I'm not an attorney, but I did write an editorial that was published in The Hill trying to argue why uh, these are not implicating stand your ground laws uh, and why stand your ground laws themselves do not allow you to shoot first and ask questions later. And in that editorial, I encouraged gun control advocates who use the political rhetoric of shoot first uh, to describe these laws to discontinue using those because in a situation where the law of self-defense is complex and people don't understand them, hearing repeatedly that these laws allow you to shoot first and ask questions later may actually encourage or facilitate people shooting first rather than thinking first and exercising uh, reasonable decision making in those cases. Um, now, on the other side, like did the guy in upstate New York, did the guy in Kansas City really hear every town's messaging about shoot first laws and therefore overreact to the situations they were in? I think probably not. What I think is, is that perhaps in the one case, an older gentleman living alone uh, would be a sort of like what we would think of as a dog, as a fear biter, like overreacting to an uncertain situation. And someone who would sit uh, on their porch and shoot at people who are in cars in their driveways, you know, appears to be someone who uh, is just, you know, a bad actor or who engages in profoundly bad decision making. I regret to say that it, when I go onto the internet and I Google shoot first and ask questions later, one of the things that comes up are signs that are available for purchase on Amazon with prime next day delivery that basically say, we shoot first and ask questions later. 
and these signs are despicable. If you have one of these signs, what you should do with that sign is take it, turn it sideways, fold it in half, and shove it right in the garbage because these signs are not at all representative of what any responsible gun owner should be thinking or saying. Uh, if it just makes you feel better to trigger the libs or to try to own the libs or whatever your subconscious motivations are, whatever lack you're trying to make up for, just try to be more self-aware and try to understand that if we want to have reasonable laws of self-defense, which allow people to reasonably act in self-defense, that these sorts of things are not helpful. So whether you are every town or some other gun control uh, or gun violence prevention advocacy organization, or whether you're someone who uh, is a gun owner and is tired of being criticized for being a gun owner, and so you wanna act out by buying a stupid sign, everybody needs to stop talking about these laws as shoot first and ask questions later. There's nothing about the law of self-defense that allows that. And thankfully, I should say in concluding that even though we had this string of unfortunate events uh, with people uh, using their firearms and claiming self-defense, uh, for the most part, the 77 and a half million uh, gun owners in the United States act morally and prudently most of the time with their firearms. So we can be thankful for that, but let's try to make the situation even better.